Well, good morning. It is really, really good to be with you. This is the final one of our series called The Race Marked Out For Us, and today is our gift day, uh, which is a really, really special time in the life of our church. If you're visiting today, it's great to have you with us. Uh, I hope it encourages you. I, ho I hope it encourages you to see what's going on in, in our church family. Uh, and, and the reason we're having this gift day is because we have come to a moment where we have these two critical financial needs. So, so on the one hand, we have the builders standing by to renovate the community centre in Lawrence Kirk and the Credo building and we uh, have a, a large gap where the money needs to be. We've got a chunk of money but we need £194,000 more and then we also have this other gap which is in our regular income which is mostly caused by inflation but we have a gap of about £15,000 a month there too, £12,000 plus gift aid. And so we've all, as a church family, we've been praying and we've been fasting and we've been considering what our response will be and today we're going to try and meet those needs as best we can. And uh, just a couple of quick points to mention uh, on it all. The, the, the first thing is just to remind you, we have two bank accounts. And so uh, there's a bank account for the building fund, which is the one-off gifts. And there's a different bank account for the regular giving. And all of the details are on the pledge card. Uh, and so you'll just need those. Our preference is that you uh, do everything you need to do with your own bank. So, so uh, online banking or, or um, uh, phone banking or, or, or whatever. That would be the best thing because we incur the fewest charges, bank charges. But equally, if you can't get that to work and you just want to just give with a with your debit card, then you can go to pledge.catalyst.bin. Remember to fill in a gift aid, um, the gift aid form on the back as well if you're a UK taxpayer because that will add 25% to the gift that you give and that would be super helpful. Um, and uh, when we've done all of that, there'll be a time later on in the service where you, uh, everyone will have time just to finalise what they're writing on their pledge card if they haven't already. And then uh, if you've got kids out in the kids' ministry, you can fetch your kids and we're, we're going to make some envelopes available so everyone could put their pledge cards in an envelope and, uh, with any cash or checks or whatever that they need to put in there. And so it's completely anonymous then. It's sealed. No one else can see it except the church accountant. And then uh, when we're ready we're going to worship together there's going to be a basket at the front of the church and we are uh, those of us who are responding in that way can bring our pledge cards in the envelopes and and put them in the front and we can all celebrate together and then later on the church accountant will add all of that up and when all of the gift days have taken place then we will announce the number of or the numbers of, of where we've got to and, and we'll let you know what the plan is after that so, uh, over the last few weeks, we've been looking at this race that's been marked out for us. We've looked at the runners of the race, and then we looked at the nature of the race, and finally today we're looking at the purpose of the race. And we've got a passage from the Bible to read this morning, which is 1 Corinthians chapter 9, and we're going to read from verse 22. So 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 22, this is the Apostle Paul writing, he says this, To the weak I became weak, to, the, uh, to win the weak I have become all things to all people so that by all possible means I might save some. I do this all for the sake of the gospel that I might share in its blessings. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that won't last but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave, so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. So what can we observe about the purpose of the race? Well, first of all, the race is for the sake of the gospel. It's Paul's passion. You could even say it's his obsession. Uh, he is obsessed with communicating the good news of Jesus to as many people as possible. You see that in verse 22. He says, I've become all things to all people so that by all possible means I might save some. I do all this for the sake of the gospel. 
his drive, his absolute burning motivation is that as many people as possible might hear and receive the, the life transforming message of Jesus. If it's good enough for him, it's good enough for us. A while ago, a friend of mine, completely unprompted, gave me a bottle of whiskey. Uh, from memory, it was a, a Glenfiddich 15. It was amazing, and I loved it. And, and I, I kind of treated it really carefully, and I eked it out for as long as I could. So it would be like, on a Saturday night, you know, I've walked the dog, and I've washed the car, and I've cut the grass during the day. And then on Saturday night, I'm thinking, what would go really well with an episode of Line of Duty? And out would come the Glenfiddich 15, and I'd just give myself a little, just a few drops, and then I would enjoy that for the rest of the evening. And then, and then you know, maybe in a few weeks after that, I would do the same again. And, and it lasted for quite a while, but eventually it ran out. And so, like, I don't like to boast, but I'm pretty good with a search engine. And so I kind of Googled the way and I searched for Glenfiddich 15, 70 centiliters. And, and after a while, I came up with an absolute bargain. I found this bottle for 17 pounds, which was about a quarter of what it would normally go for. I was so thrilled. I had my card in my hand. I was just typing in the numbers from my card. And I realized, hang on a minute, something doesn't feel quite right about this. And when I looked uh, more carefully, it was indeed a Glenfiddich 15 70 centiliter bottle. But that's all it was. It was just an empty bottle. I don't know why they were selling an empty bottle, but that's all it was. And my point is, you know, let's be really clear. Many of us will be giving today towards the renovation of the Mearns building and the Credo building. Uh, and, you know, it's, those buildings are, are amazing and they represent God's miraculous provision for us and we're so thankful for them. But those buildings are empty bottles. The gold is everything that's going to happen within them. What we want to see is men and women and children hearing about Jesus, perhaps for the first time, in those buildings. You know, like, let's be really, really clear. We're not running this race for the sake of buildings. We're running this race for the sake of the gospel. We'll never be people who are like, oh, come and see our buildings because they're our favorite thing. You know, we'll never be the kind of people who have church meetings about the color of the carpet and, the, you know, what shade of magnolia we're going to paint the walls. The buildings will never be our obsession. In fact, we almost couldn't care less about the buildings, but we need the buildings because we need to contain the gospel. These buildings are, are, are facilities. And they're facilities that facilitate the communication of the good news of Jesus to more people in a more effective way. And so uh, that's really where we are. You know, uh, we, we don't care about the buildings. We're grateful for them. But this whole race is we are running this race for the sake of the gospel. And now let me hand it to our site pastors who are going to talk about the second point. We're running this race for the sake of others. Okay, see you in a bit. Thank you, Chuck. So back in January, I shared about the vision for Catalyst Live, that we were to be like the sower in the parable that Jesus shared, that we were to freely share the gospel as far and as wide as we could, knowing that we have been called by Jesus to go and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, to be messengers of life and to be people creating spaces to grow. Messengers of life and people creating spaces to grow. That was the vision that I cast back in January. And so when we do each of those things, it does come at a cost to us. It can be costly in our time, our sense of reputation, uh, our energy, our resources, including our finances. Now, following on from Chuck's uh, earlier reading of scripture in 1 Corinthians 9, verse 27, just a couple of verses after, Paul says this, he says, no, I strike my blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. What Paul is saying is that he is sacrificing his own comfort to be able to preach the gospel. He ultimately, in this moment, is preferring others than himself. 
And so for us, this is a prayerfully considered moment before the Lord where we submit ourselves afresh to him, acknowledging that he is where everything comes from. The very breath in our body, the provision we receive, the opportunities that we have, it comes from him. So in the bigger picture, we recognize that we are part of one body, the body of Christ, the church that needs all parts of the body to work together, that each part mutually supports and works in tandem so that the whole body thrives. We would prefer one another. The online community and those of you who are part of the wider online who maybe just haven't quite put your head above the parapet yet. You are part of the body here at Catalyst Vineyard Church. You are a recognised, precious part and have a, a part to play in seeing God's kingdom come. We are all part of the body. And that body exists for God, first and foremost. Primarily, the body exists for God. But we also do exist for one another and for those who have already counted themselves in. But also the Archbishop um, William Temple said this, he said that the church is the only society on earth that exists for the benefit of non-members. So we exist also for those who have yet, haven't yet said to, yes to Jesus or, be, or become part of the community here at Catalyst. We exist to bring the message of life and to create spaces for people to grow in their faith. COVID launched us all online, but we decided to stay here because we saw that not only could we reach people who would not never, who would never normally step foot in church, but we could also reach people in our community that perhaps would love to step foot in church, but can't due to their location or their life circumstances. In the last three years, over a quarter of a million people have interacted with our channel in some way, shape or form. That's crazy. <laughs> It's not about numbers, but each one of those numbers represents a person behind a screen. And each of those people, a seed has been sown. And we pray that one day, that in time, they would either accept Jesus or they would continue to grow in their relationship with him. As a result of going online, we have seen an online community built where leaders are being invested into despite their location and are building discipleship where otherwise it could be lonely and isolating for some individuals. We have seen how someone interacted with our online presence through our Instagram and walked through the door of one of our in-person services, gave their life to Jesus over time and are now part of the Catalyst Vineyard Church community. What a precious thing. We've seen how the online community is reaching out to their local community as well through Easter Egg Hunt and through an Alpha course that is already happening in Oban. God has been providing ways for people to connect with the gospel through our online presence in the most precious ways. And my hope and prayer is that it continues in years to come and that it grows. My prayer is that we would see more people connect with us online and accept the life-changing message of Jesus into their lives. My hope is that people who are searching for answers on the internet are met with a message of hope and life by interacting with our content. I pray that where people are bombarded with so much noise online, that we would be able to cut through that and that people would hear the freedom that Jesus brings and that that would be extended to all who want to hear and who are searching. And I pray that communities would be built and formed in places our online community resides and that more lives will be impacted by the gospel. I hope that we get to see that. So practically, what does this gift day mean for us as part of the online community? I think it means a couple of different things. I think it gives us an opportunity to invest afresh into the vision of online church. You know, we exist through being able to operate out of the buildings that we either own or rent. You know, Catalyst Live doesn't just have this own kind of nucleus somewhere um, for free. You know, we are able to do this because uh, of, you know, the buildings that we're in. Catalyst Live comes at a financial cost and as part of the new building in the John Street, we, uh, so part of the North site, we hope to have a dedicated space to be able to record as part of sharing the gospel far and wide. 
But this gift day also enables us to be part of the wider body. And I think that that's really important. You know, I've been part of this church for almost 15 years and so have been part of the last few gift days. And it's been an absolute privilege to be able to build together as part of the wider church to see God do what he has done, especially in the last year since our first kind of spreading life together moment where we launched the sites out and we became a multi-site church. And in many ways, I have been able to experience and be part of the generosity that people have poured out. It has been really tangible. Yet also part of what I have given, you know, as part of my giving, I haven't maybe seen because it's maybe gone to missions, for example, where I personally wouldn't see the impact of that sacrifice. I won't see with my own eyes the reality of where my money is going. Yet I know our mission partners are seeing God's hand at work in some of the most remarkable ways and lives are being transformed and changed in just some of the most beautiful ways. In a similar way, for those of you online, you may not experience tangibly in the same way as our in-person sites, especially in North and in Men's Will. But what we do know is that we are creating space and opportunity for the gospel to be shared, for lives to be transformed, and for people to have a place that they can call home just like us. We sacrifice for the sake of others. We are generous so that others can have the opportunity to know Jesus. We may not be able to serve in the same ways or be part of the physical body of church in the same way, but we do have the opportunity to be part of this moment where we can pay it forward for not only this generation, but for generations to come, to create space for people to join our community and to see many hear the good news of Jesus, both online, but also in person as well. We have an amazing opportunity to be part of the wider journey that our church family is going on. What a privilege. And so I'm now gonna hand over to Taryn, who's gonna explain a little bit more in her part. Welcome back. So the race is for the sake of the gospel, the race is for the sake of others, and finally, the race is for the sake of a heavenly reward. Verse 25, everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. So we could take the money that we are about to give and perhaps go on a luxury holiday with it or go out for a really fine, uh, beautiful meal at a lovely restaurant. We could maybe purchase those trainers we have our eye on or we could enjoy a really great weekly Friday night takeaway or an early morning Starbucks coffee before we go to work. And we, and in the moment we'd be thinking, that's a really great use of that money. And, and in many ways, of course it would be. But the impact of it is gone in moments. We are being invited by the Lord to invest our money, not into something that is gone in moments, but in something that will last for all eternity. And if we stop to think about that for a moment, what a privilege that is. There are not many people who get to give their money to something that ma makes such a major impact and of which we are part of. Many people give to charities that do tremendous work all across the UK and all across the, go the globe and they get to read about um, all that those charities are achieving through regular updates. But they don't get to see what is happening right on their doorsteps. We get to see the impact week in and week out of everything that we've given to. We are a part of what God is doing through this church. And so as we serve him and as we partner with him, living with eternity in mind, we can look forward with hope and anticipation of receiving a crown that will last forever. For on that day, face to face with God, we will be so glad of every decision, 
every sacrifice, every act of obedience, every faith step that we have ever taken in this life that echoes on into eternity. As he says to us, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share in your master's happiness. I can imagine for some of you, you probably have maybe recently joined us and maybe you're feeling like, oh, I just want to hold back in this moment. And I can totally understand that. I totally get that. You know, you might be just settling in and thinking, well, I'm just going to leave it to the old timers. And I really do appreciate um, that this may feel very sudden for you. Maybe for some of you, you're thinking, I wish actually I joined the church in a few months time rather than now. But it might just be that the Lord has brought you here in this moment for such a time as this. He's brought you here to be part of it. And for others of us, we've given before and we might be tempted to hold back. We might be tempted to leave it to those who have not yet given, you know, because we have sacrificed. We have um, laid things down in order to give. And my encouragement to you, as it is to myself, is to consider going again, to go again and to get involved again. For we do believe that God is saying to us, Catalyst Vineyard, run the race that I have marked out for you, enabling the long-term fruitfulness and life of our church family so that our children and their children will benefit from a healthy, vibrant, gospel preaching, kingdom advancing, transforming local church for generations to come. Now, we can't assume that all the money is going to come in. We have been praying and fasting together as a church as we lead up to this giving moment. And if all the money does come in, let's be really clear, it will be a miracle. It will involve many hundreds of hearts surrendering to the will of God in a way that can only be attributed to God's wonderful orchestration. And all we can do now is sacrificially give what the Lord is asking us to give. And then we put the outcome into the hands of our loving Heavenly Father. I'd love to close with reading uh, a letter, Paul's letter to the Ephesian church over us. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask and imagine according to his power that, it, that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen.